if you turn to page two in your practice guide packet on um, the momentum unit, you'll find that it's about impulse. Now, impulse is when an object experiences a force over a period of time, causing it to change its momentum. For example, a baseball. Your baseball coach will tell you to follow through with your swing, and that follow through will provide a little bit more time for the ball to be in contact with the bat, um, feeling that force, and changing its momentum so you can hit the ball far. A uh, classic example uh, to illustrate impulse would be uh, changing your momentum of a car. So let's say the brakes go out and you have a choice between hitting a haystack to slow you down or hitting a brick wall. We would clearly pick the haystack, but why would we? Well, the haystack is going to provide less force over a more period of time, still changing your momentum to a complete stop compared to hitting a brick wall, which that would happen immediately, you would stop. Thus, the force felt would need to be much, much greater to change your momentum to a complete stop. Let's do an example problem. All right, so um, the key concept, the key idea here is that uh, impulse, which we're going to denote with the letter J, um, is equal to the change in momentum, which can be quantified by your mass times its change in velocity. And that can also be quantified by the force applied over a certain amount of time. Okay, so this example would be a golf ball getting hit off of a tee, um, the golf ball's mass being 0 0.045 kilograms and then it's hit at a speed of 45 meters per second. The golf club was in contact with the ball for 3.5 times 10 to the negative third seconds. And we want to find A, the impulse of the golf ball during the hit, and B, the average force applied to the ball. So let's start with a picture. So we want to find, um, first of all, the impulse imparted on the ball. So part A, we're looking for impulse. Well, impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So the change in momentum can also be expressed by mass times the change in velocity. So the mass of the golf ball was 0 0.045 kilograms and the change in velocity went from rest to 45 meters per second. So then you multiply those two numbers and the impulse imparted on the ball should be about uh, 2 kilogram meters per second. And then the next question asks for the force applied to the ball. We did it. Now problem B. So the force applied is, uh, or we use the same definition, um, but the latter end of it. The impulse is going to be force times the change in time. So if we want to solve for force, then we would just have to divide by the change in time while the force was applied. So then the, the force becomes equal to the impulse divided by the time in which that took place. So the impulse we already calculated was uh, 2.0 kilogram meters per second. And the time that it took should have been 3.5 times 10 to the negative third seconds. So we do the math there and we get 580 newtons of force. That's your answer to B. This is our answer to A. Okay, 
Yeah, you try one. Got a hammer that's 12 kilograms, and it strikes a nail at a velocity of 8.5 uh, meters per second, and then it comes to rest during a time interval of 8 microseconds, which means 0 0.008 seconds. You're asked what impulse is given to the ball. And what is the average force acting on the nail? Did I say ball in that nail? Try that and check your mark. 